Colin. What's going on, Colin? Not much. How's you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Thanks for doing this. Yeah, no problem. My pleasure. Yeah. So uh, our podcast is on your journey in music and how you got to where you are now. Cool. Sweet. Um, yeah. So we always start off by uh, where were you born and raised? Uh, I was born and raised in the Outer Hebrides of Scotland, okay. um, which is about as far away from anywhere as you can get. So. <laughs> what was yeah. that like? <laughs> Um, I loved it. I loved it. Um, I, I like being outside and being on my own and, and um, kind of doing things like, you know, fishing and farming and all that kind of stuff. So I loved it. I, a lot of my friends really didn't love it, though. They, they couldn't wait to get out. <laughs> See some surfboards behind you. Are you close to water? Yeah, yeah, we are. Um, I, I surf a lot. Uh, we're quite lucky that we've got good waves, just really, really cold waves. Oh, it's cold there. We're in San Diego and with the <clears> Pacific <throat> Ocean, it's freezing here too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I was, I was shocked actually. The first time I surfed in uh, California, I, I went down to the, I didn't have any kit and my friend took me and we went down to get a wetsuit and I was like, that's okay, I'm from Scotland, I won't need a wetsuit. And the guy <laughs> in the top, you really will, you will. <laughs> I, yeah. I was like, no, okay, if you insist. And I couldn't get over how cold it was. It's yeah. cold, yeah. I mean, it's bizarre, like, a, not last year, but maybe the year before, um, pre, it was before COVID all hit. Um, the water was, like, in the 70s. It was crazy. It was, like, bath water in there. Jeez. Yeah. I mean, that. I've never surfed <laughs> a wetsuit on in my life. So, really? Yeah, never. You just, you just go in, even though it's freezing? Um, oh, I, sorry, I've never surfed in board shorts i've always had a wetsuit oh okay i was like wow that's pretty yeah, yeah. that's pretty intense <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i just stand up incredibly <laughs> incredibly hard and, and get in in shorts no i don't i've never done it <clears throat> <laughs> that's awesome well tell me about how'd you get into music um i i i kind of fell into music actually um when when i was in school when i left school i wanted to um just kind of go fishing really I wanted to to get a job on an estate and take people salmon fishing and that's all I really wanted to do mm -hmm. uh, but I always played guitar and uh, on the weekends we'd play in the pub um, and we'd play cover songs and, and it was all like you know classic stuff like like eagles and, mm -hmm. and, and you know Leonard Skinner and all that stuff that was that was uh, island music Stornoway music and so we just used to play every Saturday night for for beer money basically mm -hmm. and uh, really loved it and it just kind of creeped in my head a little bit and, and got in there and then thought about writing a song and someone offered me to go on tour and and then all of a sudden the fishing was pushed to one side and it, <laughs> sure. I'm, I'm gonna wow. go and, I'm gonna go and play music that's amazing well guitar was that the first instrument you learned guitar yep yep guitar at parties um I, I think i think my whole musical life has been kind of skewered not skewered but it's been led by the fact that when i was 15 i asked my mom and dad for an electric guitar mm -hmm. and they said no because it was too loud so they bought me an acoustic guitar and so ever since then it's been like well that's i play acoustic guitar it's it's funny i, I never wanted to play acoustic guitar i thought they were lame i thought i wanted to play <laughs> you want like, to rock <laughs> And then all of a sudden I was into, you know, acoustic guitar. It's funny, but yeah. That's cool. So at 15, you got the acoustic guitar. Was it always covers up until, you know, after the bar gigs were happening? We tried, you know, like anyone who's 15 or 16 tries to write songs. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and, and it was, and it was just like, you know, yeah, trying, you're learning, you're, you're testing the water. Um, uh, it wasn't until it wasn't until I was like eighteen or nineteen that I really seriously tried to to kind of write some tunes and and kind of got into it. And I think someone introduced me to Bob Dylan. Okay. Aside from the songs I knew, some some a girl told me about um, the freewheeling, and I got that, and that sort of sparked my sparked my creativity a little bit. That's amazing. Um, always the singer in the in the cover bands that you played in with the bars. Yeah, always the singer. Yeah, um, 
I started out, I started out on bass guitar, but now it's, you're too hidden then. I was <laughs> just wanted to be at the front showing sure. up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's but, awesome. Yeah, yeah, the bass guitar got chucked pretty quickly. Um, sure. <laughs> well, you said uh, you were playing at the, these bars and then you were able to go on tour. Talk about that. How did, I mean, who, who offered you the tour? And you must have been playing a bunch of shows with your original music first. We so we, we we did it off our own back. We um we would play every weekend, and then at one point, when we a band practice, we started playing our own songs. Mm -hmm. like, well, you know, we're from an island. We're so far away from London. We're so far away from the music industry. We're just going to have to do it ourselves. Mm -hmm. Let's get some money. We got a friend to record an album for us, and we pressed it ourselves on the CDs. And wow. Like, Let's go out on the road. That's what bands do. Well, we've got a CD. What do we do now? Let's go. <laughs> sure. So we booked, we booked like six dates around Scotland so we could go out and play our own music because no one at home was was too fussed about our music at that point. Um, and uh, on that first tour, we actually played to one man and a dog. <laughs> I, I, I thought it, it was the strangest thing. We went to Dundee, which is a coastal town in Scotland that's really... Mm -hmm on the east coast and it's quite an industrial town and we played in this venue and there was a man at the bar with his dog having a pint and he was the only person in the venue he left. he left after the first song oh yeah so that was that was our first introduction to touring but it was great mm -hmm. it was great you just you know when you're i think when you're that age the the thought of like sleeping on damp floors and and, and playing you know and doing all that stuff cramming into a van it's so exciting you just love sure. it it's yeah great. that's awesome and with this is this band eventually fizzle out and that's how you start your solo journey yeah yeah okay so how long were you in the band for i honestly can't remember we we still we, it's still kind of going on till oh well, really and we get together once a year now and play covers in a in a pub in the middle of nowhere the same and, pub that you guys started at same pub yeah that's same, awesome same people same crew same audience and yeah it's funny so um so yeah we're still friends but uh you know it was that so my my friend uh there was there was a couple of guys in the band that were a little bit older and they were starting to get serious with their jobs and careers and things like that mm -hmm. and i uh i got i got offered a record i got offered a record deal for myself so i i ditched them really quickly wow yeah <laughs> Tell me about that. Did somebody <laughs> approach your band and just say, hey, let's talk about you solo? Like, how did that work? I went down a road there where I was going to try and sugarcoat it. And then I thought, if they ever see this, they're going to be like, you liar. <laughs> <laughs> you and you ditched us. Yeah. That was <laughs> oh, man. So what, what like, how did the label thing happen? Somebody just, like I just said, somebody just came up to you after a show and said, hey, let's, let's talk about a solo thing. We, we played a, a, like a conference thing in uh in aberdeen and uh this guy who i'm still friendly with he he came up to me and he was uh a scout for universal in wow uh universal publishing it was and he was doing development deals for young artists and he was kind of there was a lot of money then in, mm -hmm. uh, in that sort of development kind of area so he came up to me and he was like i'll give you a record deal if you ditch your band and i was like no way man no way <laughs> We're like brothers. Yeah. Two weeks later, I was like, "Is that is that still a thing? Can I have that?" <laughs> like, so, <laughs> so you get signed to Universal Music, and do they put you on the road? Do you put you in the studio? What what happened next? I got signed to Universal Music Publishing, and uh, uh, it was Dougie, the, my pal. He was he was Scottish, and and he was sort of an up and coming in in the company at that time. And he'd signed, I think he signed, I think he signed Adele and Kate Nash and Lily <laughs> Allen and me. <laughs> <laughs> like, That's uh, quite a legendary roster. Yeah. And uh, my dad really enjoys telling people, it's like, well, you know, three out of four ain't bad. So, yeah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah, so I mean that's that's kind of the, the story sort of been twisted over the years. But he'd he'd signed Adele, and then 
she'd had that first album which had done quite well i don't even know if she'd had the album out by then but mm-hmm. it, she everyone knew she was going to be a big star so he he kind of was riding high and he said i'm going to sign this young guy from the hebrides mm-hmm. who's not done anything and they were like sure give him a punt so i got whisked off to london stayed there for three years wrote songs went to studios every day wow. went to abbey road went to olympic went to whoa Hogan. i got Did it you- was like the the, an apprenticeship you can buy it was just incredible that is so cool did you get to record at all in abbey road studio i did i, I, I mastered my first album at abbey road and um wow that was really cool was when, that the anchor or was that a different record it was so at this point i was called the boy you trapped the sun okay and um it was uh it was that album that we uh that mastered at abbey road and uh i'd um I'd, I'd worked with like a lot of really great songwriters at this point. I worked a lot with Ian Archer, who mm-hmm. um, he's recently, he's, he's doing really well now. I think he, he did, um, uh, oh, what's the name of that guy? James Bay. He did oh yeah. Bay. Yeah. James Bay is huge. And um, he's, he's sort of been on the up and up and uh, I, I, I met a guy then called Jimmy Hogarth who, um, I work with now and so I kind of got thrown in this sort of singer songwriter scene as it was all kind of really exciting and mm-hmm. happening um yeah I got to uh I got to do some amazing stuff it was it was a it was an amazing time to be a singer songwriter in London definitely mm-hmm. yeah and f- well you said that was called the boy who trapped the sun yeah yeah okay. the, the album was called fireplace and um yeah that that uh, it came out and it did it did okay um but sort of uh, <clears throat> not quite not quite well enough for a universal. So it was kind of a uh, very amicable parting of ways and then mm-hmm. kind of went away for a while. I moved home then and then kind of started kind of doing stuff on my own from there. So Okay. And and when you, you moved home and just kind of regrouped and it, tell me about the, the archer. Was that or the anchor? I'm sorry. I'm saying the wrong thing. The anchor. <laughs> um, when did so that record came out in 2013? Like, how, what was the time period in between the two? So, um, Fireplace came out around about 2009, 2010, and I I toured for a year. Um, did you tour uh, just the UK or, or whereabouts yeah, did you get just to go? The UK. It, I don't think it came out in America at all, actually. Okay. Um, I got, I had like a dream run of festivals and um, I got to play with Bruce Springsteen in Hyde Park. And Whoa, you know, that's crazy. You know, I call this stuff now. I'm like, man, I'm so lucky. I, got, I had such a fun time. It's great. That's amazing. Yeah. And toured and um, just my own, just me and a guitar went around and, and with my buddies and, and occasionally had a band and most of the time I was just by myself. And yeah, it was, uh, it was a good time. That's cool. Yeah. So yeah, sorry, your question. Um, it was so then I moved home, uh, and I was home for three years, and um, I didn't do much. I sort of I was a wee bit burnt out from the road. I was quite young, really, when I moved to London. So at that point, I was a bit sort of burnt out from the kind of partying and touring and just mm-hmm. enjoying it, I suppose. Um, so I had a bit of a time off and and regrouped and then I started making some new music um around that time of the anchor and I just recorded that in in here in this room oh wow yeah did like four or five songs sent them off to a pal of mine who ran a little label <clears throat> based out of the highlands mm-hmm. and um sort of edged back into it a little bit it's kind of slowly but surely start going out and 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 got back into it so. wow that's all. And and did you start touring at that point, or you just kind of slowly started playing more around, you know, your hometown, or how did you bra- branch out from there? I just went straight back on the road, really. Um, oh wow! Yeah, it's it's a small place, so there's there's not really much to do gig wise here. There's kind of you know the Saturday nights and there's covers and things, but you know, you, you I'd, I'd maybe play like one or two shows a year at home, um, and the rest of the time was all out on the road. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I played a lot with a pal of mine called Rachel Sermani. Um, played guitar for her for a while, went on tour with her, and um, was touring by myself. 
and then I'd started sort of thinking this was around about the time I'd started thinking about doing an album I was thinking about Bloodlines mm-hmm. and um, I went on I got a chance to go on tour and support Ethan Johns um, wow. the producer and we uh, got on really well sort of explained to him what I was going to do and he kindly offered to produce my album so that so then that was it that was me kind of mm-hmm. back on that kind of back in that world back again. in that world yeah and with that record did you record that record in your in your room again or is that like you he took you somewhere and did a studio we did it at peter gabriel's studio real world <laughs> oh wow <laughs> how was that experience that is just the most amazing studio it's ridiculous it's in the countryside in bath so it's like rolling english hills streams with trout it's all <laughs> oh, wow. quintessential there's a little village right beside the studio that's got like an old pub with all the kind of rickety walls and a landlord and they kind of pour the ales off the floor the, the full works and the studio is like in a converted mill it's like this space age studio in a converted mill wow and, uh, yeah we went there for two weeks two weeks was it we went there for we're at ethan's house for a week and then we were there for a week and, and we did the album. Wow. And, and then the record comes out and do you, is it the same cycle? Did you go on tour right away? Yeah, yeah. I, it was um, a little bit uh, less intense than, than the first time around. I, I so At this point, I'd signed with um, BMG. Wow. And, um, so they put me on the road, but it got a much better response uh, in America than, than um and fireplace well fireplace didn't come out in america but uh, this one uh, got a bit of a got a bit of a response so we got to come over and, and tour and do some stuff in america for the first time which was great wow was it getting like radio play like how did you see the success there like streaming numbers i mean it came out what a couple of years ago three years ago or so it was it was it was more just just that kind of that kind of initial sort of Thing, a little bit of good feeling. We got invited to South by Southwest and, wow. and um, got invited to play at Bonnaroo and, and stuff like that. So, you know, people were starting to take interest. It, it wasn't like we did. We hadn't had any songs on the radio or anything like that, but people kind of sat up and, and listened. And people also really sat up and listened because Ethan Johns was producing it. And it's a, a pretty heavy badge of kind of to sure. have on the album, you know. Right, so. right, right. right. That's cool. And was that the first time you had uh, came out here to the United States? And- um, I, I'd been out to South by one time before, two times before. To perform or just as a fan? To perform. I, I, I played guitar for a pals band when I was underage, actually. Jeez, I think I was 20. And my oh, wow. friends had got into South by Southwest and they were like, will you come and play guitar for us? I was like, yes, definitely. <laughs> At that time, I have to admit, it was a bit of a blur. I don't remember much of it. <laughs> but uh, I'd got to go back one time after that when Fireplace was out um, mm-hmm. through Universal. Universal took me over. And, um, yeah, I, I really enjoyed it, but I'd, I was just kind of playing to empty rooms and things. I think nobody, it was just so vast. Mm-hmm. At that stage, South By was just massive. It was so huge. Like, oh, yeah. You couldn't get over it. Um but then, yeah, when we went back the last time with Bloodlines, we we did a lot of stuff and, and and we spoke to a lot of people and played a lot of shows. So it was it was a different thing altogether. Felt felt like we were in amongst it a little bit. Mm-hmm. And it must have been different as you're growing as yourself and you're the you know people are going to see you instead of you're the guitar player in in, in another band. Was that a bit yeah, different? For sure. Yeah, it was. But a, a, a lot more of the fo- focus of attention, which was a, which was strange. It's still something I quite struggle with, to be honest. I'm not, <laughs> yeah. not very good at it. <laughs> well, after the run of Bloodlines, I mean, what? Where were you? Like, because if that record came out in 2018, like, you know, we're we're gearing up pretty close to when COVID hit. Like, were you working on? Because I know you have a new record that you just I just saw on your Instagram that you had to push back a little bit. Yeah. Um, when did you start working on the record that's going to come out in the summer? And how was that kind of like, where was that chronologically after Bloodlines in the tour? I, I, I actually wrote the new record 
on like a little gap touring. I had like kind of two weeks off. Mm-hmm. I was at home and and um, I'd been thinking about it. I had an idea um, for the songs. I'd had a I'd had a friend that passed away suddenly, and and it's I'd kind of in my head, and I was thinking a lot about it, and thinking a lot about home and and things like that. And um, the uh, I think the songs were kind of forming in my head a little bit when I was out on the road anyway. Mm-hmm. So when I came home, they all came out pretty quick. And um, I'd, I'd spoken to my pal, Jimmy Hogarth, um, who, who uh, I'd known from the fireplace when I was younger. Mm-hmm. I, I spoke to him about it and asked him if he'd be up for, for producing it. And he said, yes, and he had some free time. So we, it was really quick, like we'd, we'd finished I finished doing the touring and finished doing everything for Bloodlines um, around about the, I think around about January, February time. Mm -hmm. And we, I I spent uh, like a month or a couple of months um, writing, demoing, doing all that stuff with the songs I had. Went into Jimmy's in the spring, went back in June and it was finished. So, you know, we, I think I spent... I went. Uh, I had five days, and then went back and did a week and a half, and then that was that was pretty much it done. Just the two of us. My friend Murdo plays drums as well. He lives in London, but it was pretty quick. Uh, so we were ready to go, and we were kind of we'd had a new label, and and everything was falling into place, and it was all good. And then it was mm-hmm. like, oh, this thing's happening, so we might have to push it back for a wee while. Yeah. But uh, wow. Yeah. So, so this is all you, you were done with the record. Everything was finished. You had, you got signed to a new record label. I saw that, which is awesome. I mean, you're on the same label as band of schools and placebo, like some legendary bands. And then you, you guys were like gearing up and then March hit and it all shut down. Band of skulls are the nicest guys, by the way. I've met them once. They're so cool. They are just the loveliest guys. I really (laughs) like that. They're so nice. Um, yeah yeah i was it was it was i was ready to go um and i I'm, and because we'd like before i'd i'd sort of taken that big gap and and normally there is a bit of a gap in, in between making records like you kind mm-hmm. of you you get into that routine of of being on the road and doing gigs and you're so focused on that and then you come home and you're like you need to you need to write and be creative now you have to mm-hmm. stop that road mentality. So it normally takes a wee while. So it was really unusual for me personally to just be ready to go. I'm like, I got songs, let's go. And my sure. manager was like, yeah, great, let's do it. Why not? Let's just keep going. Mm-hmm. But um, the universe had other plans. Right, right, right. <laughs> wow. So oh my. So when COVID hits, did what? Where, where are you at? I mean, are you like, okay, now I have this record. Like, are you inspired to write more music? Do you want to hold on? You know, I mean, you're kind of in a weird in limbo place because you have these songs that you had written and were ready to release in the beginning of 2020. And now we're at 21. And you're going to have to push it because nobody's still nobody's playing. Hmm. At the beginning of lockdown, I kind of was like, oh, well, OK, I'll I'll spend the summer at home. Why not? I mean, right. <laughs> I'll go surf. That was my instant reaction. <laughs> I don't know. Got surf. plenty of time to surf. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what can you do? Um, but then when it dawned on me that it was going to be a long term thing, I was mm-hmm. like, let's let's just do something. Let's start playing into my phone every day. So I do an Instagram um songs every day and, and I actually kind of went all the way back to what I did. When I was young, I just played covers every day. I took requests online. Oh, cool! And and I would actually do covers on the spot. If anybody said anything, I would try and play it and have a laugh. And on Saturdays, I did purely power ballads. And I, <laughs> what was your favorite power ballad that you did? Um, it's got to be Purple Rain. Oh, there you go. You know. I mean, it's that's that's the pinnacle of power ballads, isn't it? Definitely, yeah. definitely, it's definitely the the highest bar. <laughs> meatloaf was the hardest. Oh yeah. man, you did meatloaf. <laughs> I murdered meatloaf. I really did. I can't. I, that's interesting. I would love to hear, hear that again be, or hear your version because it's like it's all piano based. It is. It was a nightmare to play on guitar. <laughs> <laughs> breakdowns and like timing changes and stuff oh man it was 
it's really stressful <laughs> that's funny did you so you knew going into those like when somebody would throw out a cover i mean if you didn't know you just try to noodle around and figure it out i would google the lyrics and just have a go yeah. <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> yeah but uh that well, was good i think people really enjoyed that it was kind of it was kind of fun but uh I've always had this, I've had this thing in my mind as well for a long time, because I live in such an isolated place and it, and it's quite hard sometimes to get away quickly to do gigs. I thought this is a good opportunity to see how far you can go online, see how mm -hmm. much you can actually promote an album when you, you can't leave a place, because actually going forward, it's going to be kind of useful for me, really. So. Sure. I mean, who knows when people are going to be able to tour and obviously get big crowds of people together again. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, so are you going online? Is that kind of how you're, you've been promoting the record? I know you've, re you've released a few songs off the album and is it just through live streams and like IG live things that you're, that you're doing to kind of get, get the songs in front of people? Yeah. Yeah. We, um, we, we were going to, we were going to put the album out, um, in, in January. So we'd kind of, we kind of decided right we're going to do the album campaign anyway and we'll just kind of go and when we can get out on the road we'll get out on the road mm -hmm. um so uh my, i i do a lot of i'm pretty hands-on with the filming and photography and, and the artwork and everything mm -hmm. um anyway and i work a lot with some pals that live on the island so we just kind of we just went ahead we we you know i live in a beautiful place getting beautiful imagery isn't a problem so we sure. just went um, I wrote a few ideas for videos and we just went out and filmed them and um, yeah we we, we that, that was it really we, we couldn't really do much more than that but mm -hmm. we tried to do as much as we could with the, with the tools that we had so and I, I think it's it's rolled along kind of nice we thought by the we thought by this time we might be out doing stuff mm -hmm. or we might be doing sure. thing and I actually did a gig at home a month ago before oh. the new regulation because we've not had any COVID cases on the island prior to last week. So oh. we got special dispensation and we did one of the first gigs in Scotland. Wow. One of the first in the UK actually since the lockdowns um, hit last March. We had a, a socially distanced concert and it was lovely. And I, I, that was a nice treat to be able to do that. But mm -hmm. uh, what it's a cool thing to be a part of, too. I mean, one of the I mean, the first show to, to happen in over a year or close to a year. Yeah, yeah, it was it was really surreal. And people were nervous. It was really yeah. interesting. And people were like, hadn't been out in a social setting for so long and they didn't really know what to do with themselves. The first <laughs> night, everyone was really well behaved. And the second night, everybody just lost it. And, like, got <laughs> excited and, and were like shouting and, and, and like doing all the things they weren't meant to do. And they were just like, I don't care anymore. That's, okay. <laughs> oh, that's awesome <laughs> well that must have been a pretty yeah that a pretty cool experience to have especially since nobody had been out and doing anything in such a long time to be mm. able to be the person to to perform to people i'm sure that was quite was an amazing really nice. experience yeah 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 it was it was really nice it was it was i'm glad we were able to do it and we had that little window to do it so sure that's um that's unfortunate i didn't know so you guys are back on lockdown like some so obviously somebody came down with a case of of it yeah the uk um is in uh i think it's I don't, somebody said it's the third lockdown i think it's like the 48th lockdown <laughs> yeah i don't think we've left lockdown to be yeah. honest here in, in the in california but well, we are, the island was shut down. So, so the ferry stopped running. People weren't allowed to come and go from the island. So we oh, were, wow. effectively, we could carry on as normal because we mm -hmm. were isolated. Um, but then um, uh, there's been another um, spike in, in the UK in the last um, kind of month and a half. So we're all in lockdown. Back. Yeah. Oh, man. I know. Hopefully this will all blow over soon. <laughs> it's like hey. uh it's like how much longer can we all sit in the same you know sit inside our homes it's just crazy what a what a weird <laughs> situation <laughs> between between covid brexit and donald trump it's been a hell of a year oh <laughs> uh, yeah it's a it's an interesting time for sure 
No. Um, well, so the records you're gonna push the record into to to the summer. Um, yeah. Yeah. Summer. Do you have more songs that you're? Are you gonna release more singles from the album? Or are you gonna kind of keep it what you have right now until a few months from now? What are you thinking? We, uh, I think we're gonna do something different in the in between. Okay. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not entirely sure what yet, but uh, we're gonna do something aside from the album. We've done a few singles. Mm -hmm. and um maybe sort of as coming up to the album do kind of like a re-release on old soul um oh, that's cool. i did with um shell crow so we might put you know um do something again with that one but uh i think uh we're going to try and do something a little bit off the wall a little bit a little bit left field so nice and you, oh that yeah old soul was a Cheryl crow, crow huh that's really yeah. how did that how did that uh relationship form and how did you get on the song or get her on the song i i met um cheryl um a few years ago i i, I managed to get support with her mm -hmm. and um really hit it off with her and the band and they're just the, the nicest people she's like amazing lovely super nice very supportive and she invited me back the last every time she's been in the uk since she's invited me to come and play on the show wow so um, yeah, it's really nice. And I asked, I just asked her at the last time we played together in Glasgow. I said, "Well, do you fancy fancy singing on my record?" <laughs> like, sure, send me over. Wow. Yeah, I got FaceTime from. I was down the Croft one day with my dad, uh, tending to some sheep. Uh, <laughs> Cheryl Crow. I was like, "Sorry, Dad, it's Cheryl Crow." I, Don't uh, worry about it. Just Cheryl Crow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You 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 finish off with the sheep. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> finish with the sheep so she yeah. facetimed you that's so cool yeah, yeah oh my god did she cut the vocals at her own studio and kind of did you work almost zoom style with her or was she did she record it in the same room as you she she we sent her the tracks over and she um she recorded them and she was like such a pro that's uh, we had a five minute zoom call and then 10 minutes later i got the track and i was like that's perfect like <laughs> that's amazing like, is that okay and i was like well well, yeah it's perfect of course it is <laughs> <laughs> how cool that's so cool so, yeah really cool you guys should do like a a zoom you know play the song on instagram or something together that'd be awesome yeah that would be really cool yeah and try and do that the lockdown ends up going on any longer that'll be the only thing we'll be able to do right exactly <laughs> have you been working on anything new since i mean you had the record done a couple of years or a year plus ago i'm sure so since since then have you been writing or has it just kind of been uninspiring i've been i've been inspired a little bit differently i've been working on um some stuff with some surfer friends um doing some sort of crossover stuff. I, I have a friend called Mike Lay, who's a really talented longboarder. Mm -hmm. And, and we, we, he's also a poet. So we've been kind of shooting ideas back and forward and talking a lot about projects where I'm going to do some music and, and, and his poetry ba based around surfing. Oh, cool. And um, I've been working on a few um, kind of visual stuff, like, like little kind of short films, not short films, but like little kind of, um bits and pieces um like that so yeah i've i've been inspired not particularly to write songs but more to kind of do music and 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 lots of visual stuff so yeah that's, a, that's awesome well i can't wait to, to to hear that project that's amazing and the rest of the record um and i appreciate you talking with me today thank you so much um i have Absolutely. one more question for you before i let you go i want to know if you have any advice for aspiring artists um don't take the brown acid um, <laughs> uh, any, um you know i think the most important thing the most important thing that i've ever been told or the most important thing that i've ever learned is just keep it fun as soon as it stops being fun as soon as you as soon as you wake up in the morning and feel like you're doing a job then it's all over just you know keep it fun do it do it because it's fun and do it for fun and you'll never go wrong Bring me the best word.